Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another historic game to video. Today we're taking a look at a black green squirrel tribal deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon and the deck features a ton of cards from the new Jumpstart Historic Horizons expansion and one of those is Chatterfang Squirrel General, a 3 mana 3 3 legendary squirrel warrior with forest walk so can be blocked as long as the opponent controls a forest and if one or more tokens would be created under our control those tokens plus that many 1 1 green squirrel creature tokens are created instead. So essentially doubles up all our squirrel tokens and we can also pay a black mana and sacrifice x squirrels and then target creature gets plus x minus x until end of turn so can both use it as removal or a way to pump up our own creatures then another key card in the deck is Chitter Spitter, a 3 mana artifact, saying at the beginning of our upkeep we may sacrifice a token. If we do, put an acorn counter on Chitter Spitter, and squirrels we control get plus 1 plus 1 for each acorn counter on Chitter Spitter, and we can pay a green mana and tap it to create a 1 1 green squirrel creature token. Then we also have two copies of Squirrel Mob, gets plus 1 plus 1 for each other squirrel on the battlefield as well as add 2 mana Squirrel Sovereign, a nice Squirrel Lord, giving other squirrels we control plus 1 plus 1, and it's a 2-2 two -two by itself. Then we've got a Verdant Command, 2 mana instant, that lets us choose 2 modes, and the one we're almost always going to choose is to generate 2 1-1 one -one tapped Squirrel Creature Tokens. Then we can also counter target Loyalty Ability of a Planeswalker, Exile Target Card from a Graveyard, which gives us some main deck Graveyard Hate, which is quite useful, or we can gain 3 life. Then we've got the full play set of Chatter of the Squirrel, a 1 mana sorcery that makes a 1 1 green squirrel creature token. Also has a flashback for 1 on a green so we can replay it out of the graveyard once. And then rounding out the deck, we've got some usual suspects in black midrange decks in Historic, with a full play set of Fatal Push, which also gets enabled by cards like the Chitter Spitter, which can let us sacrifice our tokens so we can enable Revolt to take out larger creatures. Then the full playset of Thoughtseize, giving us a bit of hand disruption. Then at 2 mana we also have 2 copies of Metallic Mimic, which will choose Squirrel as it enters the battlefield, will be a Squirrel in addition to its other types, and any future Squirrels that enter the battlefield will get a plus one plus one counter. And then topping off our curve, we've got 2 copies of Toski, Bear of Secrets, the legendary Squirrel that cannot be countered, is indestructible, has to attack each combat if able, and whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a player we get to draw a card. And finally, two copies of Crippling Fear as potentially powerful one-sided sweeper, as we can name Squirrel, and all non-Squirrels will get minus three, minus three until end of turn. And then a mana base also includes two copies of Castle Lochthwain as a nice card draw engine in case we start running low on cards in hand, and two copies of Lair of the Hydra, which can also turn into a creature. And then we've got two swamps, six forests, and twelve dual lands with a Blooming Marsh, the Black Green Pathway, and Overgrown Tomb. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand up against the Lurus of the Dream Den deck. Could be a Spirit Dancer deck, in which case we'll need Chatterfang as removal. A bit land heavy, but Chatterfang does give us a mana sink and so does Chatter. Could even make an argument for not playing Chatter turn one, because if we wait until after Chatterfang we can make extra tokens, but we still have the flashback mode. So I don't mind applying a bit of early pressure, following up uh, turn one Chatter with turn two Sovereign. And if they're not a Spirit Dancer deck, but like a red-black Pyromancer deck instead, it's nice to start applying a bit of pressure. Alright. So turn to Sovereign. Islands could mean blue-white. And yep, there's a Spirit Dancer. Which sadly I can't take out right away, but I will be able to maybe next turn with Chatterfang. So we can flash back Chatter, make two squirrels, and still activate Chatterfang if needed. Although the Spirit Dancer might be too large for us to take it out, depending on how many auras they put on it. Already up to 5 toughness, arcane flight. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna be able to make 8 squirrels. 
On the bright side, it doesn't have lifelink, so we might be able to outrace it somehow. So this turn, probably just uh, Chatter's Quirrell Sovereign. Can also use Chatterfang as kind of a pump spell on our own squirrels, of course. Didn't think that's going to give us lethal here. Could also easily die to the Spirit Dancer next turn, although our opponent has been stuck on two lanes, so that does limit how many auras they can deploy. Inside does give lifelink. And Sentinel's Eyes doesn't quite kill us, but it's going to be problematic. As our opponent hits us for 12, gains 12, and draws two cards. Now one thing we could do is potentially use Chatterfang to sacrifice the creature that Spirit Dancer blocks, so the other creatures can go unblocked and still deal damage without the opponent gaining any life. So things are getting a little complicated here. So let's say we Chitter Spitter, attack with everyone, opponents blocks, let's say, Chatterfang. Then we could sacrifice Chatterfang plus a token, which would give us lethal. If they block a Squirrel Sovereign instead, we sacrifice Squirrel Sovereign, we lose the plus one plus one bonus, but we still have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, I think we go for it. And we'll see how this goes. Put and blocks the Sovereign. So we'll make a Squirrel which gets doubled, and then we can sacrifice three squirrels to pump up Chatterfang himself. And our opponent doesn't gain any life. And we've got Exaxes. So very close game against Spirit Dancer. Had our opponent not missed any land drops, we probably lose this one. But yeah, got lucky. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with what looks like a keepable hand. Just need to pick up a land or two and we'll be good to go. Can fail push any scary one drops that show up. Dread Wonder is somewhat scary. It does attack past our sovereign. Sure, we'll stem the bleeding somewhat. We could eventually enable Revolt with Chatterfang sacrificing one of our Squirrels, but um, that would take a while to set up in case our opponent has something like Phyrexian Obliterator that we need to deal with. So next turn, Blooming Marsh is still untapped. Get to play either Chatterfang or Squirrel Mob. Opponent on Mono Black Aggro. Could see cards like Spawn of Mayhem here. Probably go for Squirrel Mob into Toski maybe next turn and save Chatterfang since we're not making any tokens at the moment. So the Squirrel Mob should be a little bigger. Opponent taking a lot of damage off their mana base. Alright, I see. So it's more of a zombie deck with Death Baron. Well, happy that uh, they're not keeping any Death Touchers back on defense. So... Got a couple options. Can go Chatterfang, make two squirrels with Chatter. Could play Toski attack, and I'm fine trading Sovereign for Death Baron. Squirrel Mob gets to hit them and draw a card. If they take it, we still have Toski on defense, so yeah, I think that's probably the play here. And then next turn we can Chatterfang plus Chatter. And if we draw land in the meantime, maybe even activate Chatterfang. Bone just takes it all. Verdant Command, also useful for exiling those recursive creatures. Opponents with triple one drop here. Although they all come into play tapped. Alright, let's have a look. 
So I could play Chatterfang. Don't really want to sacrifice two squirrels to kill Death Baron before attacks. So they're probably just going to block Toski with Diagraph Ghoul. And that's fine. And then I'll Chatterfang plus Chatter of Squirrels. That seems okay. The alternative would be playing Chatterfang, killing Death Baron, which also kills Diagraph Ghoul. I think I like this better. And then next turn we can go off with double Verdant Command. And probably activate Chatterfang to take out Death Baron. Bonus stays back, there's our land. So we can... Make a bunch of scrolls, gain a bunch of life. Activate Chatterfang for two. Killing Death Baron, sacking two scrolls. And attack, probably with everyone. So yeah, it looks like we have lethal here. We've got two unblocked squirrels, our opponent's taking four. So we can activate Chatterfang to give plus one, minus one to one of the unblocked creatures and deal five total. All right, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with what looks like a keepable hand. Got our two one mana interactive spells, lead with Thoughtseize. Opponents on like a green ramp deck. We can fatal push Cobra, probably want to take Nissa, even though double harmonize can refill the opponent's hand nicely. Gonna have to try and apply early pressure, maybe draw a lot of cards with Verdant Commands plus Toski. For now, I think pushing the Cobra makes sense. And then we can play Chatterfang before making double the amount of tokens with Command. So it's probably going to be Chatterfang and then double Verdant Commands or Verdant Command activate Chatterfang. Gotta hope they don't have another Nissa lined up. At least don't expect any removal spells for Chatterfang. Alright, Oracle of Moldaya could be worth taking out as we see Cobra on top. Okay, so I can Verdant Command. Chatterfang also has Forest Walk, which is relevant in this matchup. Yeah, I think we want to kill Oracle. So let's make some Squirrels. And hit for three. And then next turn, if we draw land, we can maybe Toski, if not, still have Verdant Commands plus Chatterfang available. Yeah, there's Nissa. Now we do have the means of killing Nissa, as we can Verdant Command and then attack with everyone at Nissa, sacrifice two squirrels to pump Chatterfang. So that's probably going to be the play here, since we can't allow the opponent to untap with Nyssa. And we'll sacrifice the blocked squirrel token. Chatterfang is forest walk as our opponent is about to find out. So X equals two, pumping Chatterfang, sacking two squirrels. So we have just enough to take out Nissa. And 
And yeah, we'd really love to pick up a land to start leveraging Tosky and Chitter Spitter. Squirrel Mob's not bad. Probably the play over anything else. There is an argument for Chitter Spitter over Squirrel Mob in an attempt to go wide. Yeah, I can buy that. As this will be able to pump up all our Squirrel tokens at once. Opponent is at 10. Although they do have a lot of mana, so... Could see all sorts of scary creatures and planeswalkers. Double Cobra into a Lance and harmonize a pretty nice last card to have in hand. Opponent gets to refuel. Although it doesn't look like they had anything they could play afterwards. Alright, so we'll sack a squirrel. Squirrels get plus one plus one. And do we have lethal somehow? Always worth taking a look. So Chatterfang is unblockable. Definitely getting close. So what's my play? I think it's Metallic Mimic. Naming Squirrel. Pay the two, make some squirrels. And then activate Shatterfang to kill the forest, or we can just attack. That might be okay too. And then we can sacrifice a blocked squirrel to take out a Lotus Cobra or Lenor Elves. So do we have lethal? 6 plus 3 is 9, so we're 1 shy of lethal if I were to pump Chatterfang for 3. So in that case I'll just do it for x equals 1, take out Lotus Cobra. Alright, if our opponent doesn't do anything crazy we have them with Chatterfang next turn. Uh-oh, Ugin the Spirit Dragon does count as something crazy. Doesn't kill Metallic Mimic at least, but it's gonna clean up the rest. Land gets to attack. Yeah, Ugin's rough. And uh, I think we're just dead to the Planeswalker here. Can play Toski. Squirrel Mob is gonna be a 3-3. Three, three with a plus one counter, so 4-4, four, four, I guess it survives the Ugin 3 damage, which takes out Mimic. Tosky doesn't really help in this case. Alright. Yeah, when the opponent didn't play anything after casting that Harmonize with three cards in hand, they either drew three lands or something expensive like Ugin. And uh, yeah, we were very close to killing them, could have put them to one by sacking three squirrels and pumping Chatterfang, but our opponents made the right call by uh, not letting enough damage through. Back up Ugin, explains why they were happy to minus. Can take out Metallic Mimic with a plus, and uh, if we weren't dead before, we're definitely in trouble now. We do have Lair of the Hydra we can't forget about, but didn't think that's gonna save us here. Tosky at least doesn't die to the plus two, so we'll require minus four. Opponent just going face. And uh, Tosky will be forced to attack. Can play backup Tosky. 
or we can make some squirrels that will get swept up, although I'm probably gonna see an Ugin minus 10 next turn. Yep, there it is. That's quite uh, minus 10, as we see Vorinclag's Voice of Hunger. Back up Lotus Cobra. If we double block, we lose both creatures. But yeah, it doesn't matter at this point. All right, good game. Ugin can take us out of our misery with a plus. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with an acceptable hand. Turn one, probably fine to thought seize. Could also play just a tap land. And then turn two Thoughtseize plus Chatter. Yeah, actually, let's wait a turn. There's not that many backbreaking one drops that we absolutely have to take. Just against an opposing Thoughtseize, I guess it would be nice to be the ones looking at their hand. So let's seize and then see if we want to play Chatter. All right, red green dinos. Probably want to slow them down and take Hunmaster. And then I could Chatter, or I could wait until after we play Chatterfang. Yeah, I think I'll wait. The 1-1's one not doing much for us. So we'd rather double them first. Forest Walk is turned on thanks to Stomping Ground being a forest. Rotting Regisaur, not what we wanted to see. Can enable Galta for the opponents quite nicely. So 12 minus 7, so they can't quite play Galta next turn, but they're getting close. For now, I can Squirrel Mob plus Chatter, and then next turn, can maybe grow the Squirrel Mob at instant speed. Yeah, that seems fine. Yeah, once Galta shows up, we're in trouble, so want to delay that for as long as possible. A Regisaur hits for seven. So what's our plan for next turn? Verdon Command can make four squirrels at instant speed. We can activate Shatterfang. Can we kill our opponent somehow? Nine, twelve. Yeah, we could actually kill them if they don't block the Squirrel Mob, and if they do, they might be unable to cast Galtas. I think we take it. Play our lands. Might as well flashback Chatter. And attack. Opponent blocks a 1-1. So that should put them dead to the squirrel mob. And then we can sacrifice the blocked squirrel so they don't get to enable enrage just because. Although do keep in mind the more squirrels we sacrifice to Chatterfang the smaller the squirrel mob gets. So it's not like we get to deal a ton of extra damage here. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with pretty interesting hands featuring Trivel Squirrel Sovereign. We'll see how that plays out. Turn one islands, no play. Could see an end of turn Spectral Sailor. We can maybe Fatal Push if they try and put enchantments on it. It's going to be an opt instead. So 
So still not sure what our opponent is up to, but most likely gonna run out Squirrel Sovereign number one. Chart, of course. Draw to discard, maybe an Arc Light Phoenix deck. Just a land going to the graveyard. Next turn, we can push plus play another Sovereign. Turn four, might play Toski, or we could keep developing our board first. Sprite Dragon, excellent target for Fatal Push, as our opponent is gonna shock our Squirrel Sovereign. Alright, it's only fair. Chatterfang is tempting. Although we don't have any tokens to really double with Chatterfang right away. So I think dealing with this Pride Dragon is going to be more important. The upside of holding the Sovereign is we could play both in the same turn so they don't die to shock anymore if our opponent is tapped out. But we'll see how this plays out. Yep, there's another shock. They want the Sprite Dragon to attack, otherwise Charter Course can draw without discarding. So I want to kill it before it's turned sideways. The blue-red decks typically don't really play any main deck counter spells, which is why I was able to wait. Thoughtseize could be effective. Better to play Toski once we already have a creature in play that can draw a card right away, so... Yeah, let's take a look. See what they're working with. Crackling Drake, Finale and Opts. Finale is scary. They have instants and sorceries. Although Crackling Drake is the thing that's gonna actually kill me. So that's probably what I have to take. And then, given that we know about Finale, I don't want to play a Two Toughness Sovereign since that just dies to shock, so we'll play Chatterfang. Even though it's gonna cost me some life. Alright, next turn, hopefully get to play Toski. Start drawing cards and find token generators to combine with Chatterfang. Opponent kept the card on top, that's bad news. Maybe they found an Arclight Phoenix they can discard with Finale, or just a Hardcast Phoenix, also works. Well, at least we get to draw with Toski here. Still hoping to pick up some token makers so we can actually use Chatterfang's removal ability. But we're getting very low on life, especially once we consider finally being able to get back shock from the graveyard. Alright, finale for two on Char Course and Opts. Surprised they didn't main phase it, since they could have potentially found another Arc Light Phoenix to put in play. So they've got a full grip. Fatal push to draw. Could be useful. So let's play Sovereign. Attack and see what else we can find. Don't think we need to activate Lair, would rather see what we draw. Chatter's perfect. So now we can Chatter, which lets me activate Chatterfang, which also enables Revolt for Fatal Push. Or we can just flash back Chatter as well. I think I would rather keep up both Fatal Push and Chatterfang's ability. In case of another Arclight Phoenix. Looting to kick things off. And there's another Phoenix in the graveyard. Iteration. So it'll most likely be able to get the Phoenix back, but between Push and Chatterfang, which also enables Revolt for us, we should be able to survive unless they find a bunch of burn spells. Shock is one of them. Just going for the Sovereign instead, so in that case... I guess I don't want to activate Chatterfang just yet, since they'll just get the Phoenix back. 
shock kill Sovereign. Another iteration. And then we gotta wait for the our client to come back before killing it. Although now Fatal Push is also enabled by itself, so we don't need to use Chatterfang necessarily. And we should have Lethal on the way back here with just the uh, Lair of the Hydra. So I guess we'll take three instead. All right, and Lair for three or four should be enough. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing off against a Lurus deck, and we've got a fine hand. Got some early interaction in case we're up against a Spirit Dancer deck, and Shutter Spitter shines in the more grindy matchups. Turn one, Sacred Foundry tapped, so unlikely to be a burn deck. Although, I guess it's more of a uh, Magecraft deck. Double Lightning, Helix, Defiant Strike, Fighters one, take their only creature, I guess. as they can potentially protect it from Fatal Push with Finders 1. And then... Is there a point in me playing Metallic Mimic when they have Double Lightning Helix? Probably not. Just play a tapped land and start leveraging Shitter Spitter. They didn't even put Lurus in hand, so they've got other plans. They can be playing Feather since they have Lurus as companion, so yeah, more of a Magecraft synergy deck. Alright, so kind of liking Metallic Mimic and then activate Shitter Spitter right away before they can kill my Mimic to deny the counter. Now one interesting trick we can pull off is putting a stop on our upkeep so we can activate Shitter Spitter before having to sacrifice a token. That way we potentially get to attack with a larger creature right away. Legionnaire attacks, no point in blocking when we know about Defiant Strike, which can put a plus one counter on it. And by sacrificing a token we're also enabling Revolt, which can maybe be relevant if they play Lurs. Opponent keeps up two mana. So, yeah, don't mind making a token to then sacrifice to the Chitter Spitter. And then we can play another one and activate it. Crippling Fear also potentially quite good. It's not going to kill the Legionnaire if they find us one. So I think we just attack and see what they do. If they Lightning Helix, we could decide to Fatal Push. And they Helix the token. That happens. I think Shitter Spitter Activate is still the more mana efficient play overall. And we'll activate main phase, put another stop on upkeep. Our opponent's probably gonna wait to play Lurus until they can protect it with their Find Us One. Right. They're moving in on the Legionnaire with the Find Strike. Alright, so two Chitter Spitter activations on the stack. I don't think we're sacrificing anything now. Just going to take our draw step and see what's up. Alright, so we can double Chitter Spitter plus Crippling Fear, forcing the fight as one. We could 
crippling fear if they find us one fatal push in response to just deal with the legionnaire. Although that can potentially go poorly if they have another pump spell in hand. So it's probably just double cheddar spitter verdant command fatal push so I can play overgrown tomb tapped. Opponent runs out Lurus. If they replay Lightscribe, we get them with Crippling Fear. But they're most likely gonna keep up a pump spell. So let's make a scroll token. And another one. And then I don't hate a double block. Some with sprints. So this is plus two plus one. So if I fatal push, they respond with finders one, and then we get to untap crippling fear. Although crippling fear gets lures anyway, and it doesn't get legionnaire. So I think we let the trade happen, force them to play finders one as well. Then we can fatal push legionnaire, and crippling fear deals with lures. So can also exile one of the opponent's cards from their graveyard, although gaining a life might be more relevant since we're gonna deal with Lurus here anyway. I can even fail push with Revolt on Lurus to force the fight as one, in case they have any other ways of saving Lurus to make sure they're tapped out, and our opponent just concedes to the fatal push. Alright, so got to see Chitter Spitter do its thing. Quite powerful if you can make the match a little more grindy where things don't end right away on turn four. Definitely a powerhouse in the late game. All right, so we get to see our black green squirrel deck in action. And yeah, the addition of those cheap black disruptive cards like Thought Seize and Fatal Push often allow us to play slightly longer grindy games where we get to see the power of cards like Chitter Spitter and Chatterfang, which are the centerpieces of the deck and the reason to play Squirrel Tribal to begin with. So definitely important to have those disruptive elements, otherwise you're going to get run over by combo decks on turn four. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.